A good day to you, our dear viewer. Thank you so much for choosing the National Broadcaster. It is a beautiful Sunday right here, as you can tell when you look at the weather right here in Kampala. It happens to be the 18th day of December 2022. My name is Sandra Kahonde, and I'm here to bring you some of our top stories that did transpire throughout the entire week. A special edition that comes here every Sunday, that is the weekly news roundup. Now, starting off with activities that we did see take place during the week. All movement restrictions and curfew in Movende and Kasanda districts have been lifted. President Yuri Museveni, through the Vice President and Major Jessica Alupo, directed return to normal in the two districts after new Ebola infection was registered in Movende for 34 days and in Katsanda for 37 days. Now the directive uh, was delivered in a televised address by the Vice President uh, Jessica Alupo at a Uganda Broadcasting Corporation studios Saturday night. All Ugandans and others living in the country were, uh, however, cautioned to be alert in case the Ebola virus disease re-emerges. All health units, medical personnel, front line health workers and facilities remain ready to receive any new cases. There are currently no cases on admission. Therefore, it is against this background that I am lifting all movement restrictions and curfew in Mubende and Cassandra districts with immediate effect. Today, 17th December 2022. The lifting of these restrictions is based on the fact that currently there is no transmission, no contact under follow up, no patients in isolation facilities and we are progressing well with the countdown. However, this doesn't mean that the outbreak has ended. We remain on high alert with intense surveillance across the country. In addition to this, all the responses, all the response structures developed over the past three months will remain in place. And this include the 353 bed capacity treatment units in Mubende, Madudu, Mulago, and Entebbe. The Ebola testing mobile laboratory in Mubende district. The 3,600 trained health workers of different categories will remain on standby. The district and community task forces should remain functional. The village health teams in the communities of Mubende and Kasanda districts should continue to sensitize their communities about prevention and identification of individuals with signs and symptoms. Mortality surveillance, i.e. testing of all dead bodies for Ebola in Kasanda Mubende, Masaka, Jinja, and Kampala districts should continue. Moving on, President Yore Museveni was this week commended over his successful fight against the COVID-19 pandemic and the Ebola outbreak in Uganda at the ongoing U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit. President Museveni was lauded by his Botswana counterpart, His Excellency Masisi, during the Partnering for Sustainable Health uh, session held under the theme Building Resilience for Healthy People, Healthy Countries at the Washington Convention Center. 
In his address, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni underscored the role of Ugandan scientists during the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, saying that they incorporated tradition with modern medicine to save Ugandans and neighboring countries. With a population of 43 million, had 170,000 cases of Corona-19. And we lost 3,632 people. You very well know what happened in other parts of the world. You know how many people died. Many more than, than this one here. Museveni says that Uganda has been able to contain the spread of COVID-19 which ravaged the rest of the world, adding that the country is working to develop all types of vaccines needed for humans and livestock. President Museveni also called for more collaboration between Uganda and the U.S., especially in the field of pharmaceuticals and vaccines. There are two areas where we are moving on our own, but where we would welcome collaboration if available. This is in the areas of pharmaceuticals and vaccines. It is not correct to continue with the present arrangement where in the global share of pharmaceutical production of US dollars 1.42 trillion, Africa's share is only US dollars 16 billion. Of the pharmaceuticals produced in the world, valued at 1.42 trillion, Africa's share is only 16 billion production. Uganda and Africa are better placed to produce many of the pharmaceuticals on account of the, of the plants that we have in our area. President Museveni pointed out the healthcare and promotional strategies that could help Uganda to eliminate 75% of the possible diseases that affect her people. At the sidelines of the meeting, President Museveni also met with the president of the leading American plane manufacturer Boeing, who is charged with the Middle East, Turkey, and Africa, Kulijit Gata Aroa, and his delegation, with whom he discussed the aviation industry in Uganda. Museveni also had an engagement with Abebe Selassie and the International Monetary Fund Director for Africa, and the duo discussed the economy. In other activities, a disbursement of parish development model funds to beneficiaries started this week in eight districts across the country. Post Bank Uganda, one of the key financial institutions that were selected to run the process, led the disbursement launch uh, that is today in Kayunga district, witnessed by the Vice President of Uganda. These are some of the beneficiaries of the long-awaited parish development model funds since government approved over 32,000 circles in October this year. Asaba million yemu, era wampadde million yeji emu. Najisa watu wa itamuchi, mchibi na mgrupu. Ngenda kusasura bama ya miezi mkaga, nsubile nteyo jenunda, ijakuba ezito yemu kwa miezi mkago ba misavu. Post Bank, Centenary Bank, Housing Finance and Finance Trust Bank are some of the financial institutions that were tasked by government to deliver financial services that enable beneficiaries to receive the livelihood empowerment funds directly. Uh, first of all, we are many banks. For us as Post Bank, we have around 2,500 SACO accounts. But you remember the parish are, parishes are around 10,500, so that's a quarter. But as government banks, as Post Bank with housing finance and uh, pride, we intend to come up with a solution to come all the financially excluded Ugandans, all those who are partially included. Besides Kayunga, districts that launched the disbursement of funds today include Ibanda, Gulu, Chiriandongo, Palisa, Rukunjiri, Kabale, and Kanungu. This strategy is drawn out of the NRM manifesto, the National Development Plan 3, and the uh, NRM ideological principles and pillars, in particular, the social economic transformation and the NRM strategy for delivering social economic transformation through priority sectors of commercial, agriculture, services, ICT and industry. My ministry shall continue to disburse funds to the many PDM circles 
Once all the outstanding issues around the other PDM circles are addressed by the local government. There are some circles that are not yet ready. This financial year, government has already released 529.7 billion shillings for the revolving fund, out of which 206.275 billion has been disbursed directly to the bank accounts of 8,251 ready circles in 162 local governments. Through you, Chairman Mwongi, I'm addressing all the district chairpersons and the local government leaders. I really wouldn't want to hear the story. We are not involved. EDM is not for us. You are past chairman and your councillors, and I want you to give that report in council. Number one, to mobilize the population. All beneficiaries who applied successfully for the first phase of the parish development model funds should have gotten money to their accounts by February 2023. Reporting for UBC News, Wadulo Mark Arnold in Kayunga district. In other activities of the week, the Prime Minister Robin Anabanja uh, this weekend congratulated Ugandans for almost completing the year 2022. This is part of the Premier's Christmas and end of year message to Ugandans. Fellow Ugandans, in this festive season, we thank God for his continued protection and providence. Despite the local and global challenges such as Ebola, COVID-19, increased commodity prices and landslides, the year 2022 has been successful and we have achieved a lot as a country. As individual families, communities, and the country at large, let us reflect where we have come from, where we are, and where we want to be. I appeal to you, fellow Ugandans, to work hard and provide for your families, support and embrace government programs aimed at improving household incomes and livelihoods. Enjoy responsibly. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2023 for God and my country. Now, residents who had camped at Karugutu Primary School at Rebisengo Sub-County Headquarters in Intoroko District have started returning to their homes after fighting uh, between the UPDF and the ADF rebels stopped. Our intelligence and our operations force within the border areas under the command of Kano Saulo received intelligence about the intending uh, crossing of ADF rebels and indeed 20 to 30 of them uh, managed to cross but as they were crossing they were intercepted uh, in areas of River Samaliki and uh, another area called Kayanja which is within uh, uh, the border between Bundubuja and Intoroko. Uh, they were intercepted in that night, they had a fight, uh, later on up to the morning they were followed up, another fight ensued within areas of Untoroko and uh, fortunately a good number of them were put out of action. As we talk today, at this time uh, about uh, 16 of them have been killed and uh, out of those 16, 13 guns have been recovered including an AK-47. Initially they were 15, a, a, PK, a PK which is a submachine gun. Initially, they were 15 killed, and later on, there was one who was still maneuvering through the waters of River Samaliki. He was also killed, and uh, the gun removed. Uh, in this incident, we also had information that we don't have the details of, of the two civilians who were uh, killed by this group. We are yet to verify that information. But also in the fight, we lost one of our soldiers, and one was injured. This has been one of the most successful encounters, and the ADF should know that uh, any movement they make, any foot they take, we are with them. So in an, an attempt to cross from Congo, where the heat is too much for them into Uganda, will be met with a very, very thorough beating. This was a very good Christmas gift. We congratulate our forces, especially the forces of 8th Battalion of Mountain Division, under the command of Colonel Saulo. It did a very good job what UPDF is expected to do. We are aware of some people who have crossed, uh, leaving their families and to a certain primary school. 
We are clearing up the area. They will be safe to go back and stay. UPDF will do all possible to protect its frontiers and the people of Uganda. Now, relatedly on the same conversation from Montoroco, uh, the Mounted Division Commander of the UPDF and Commander Operation Ashuja Major General Dick Olum uh, this week commended the UPDF for having killed the suspected ADF rebels uh, before causing any harm onto the civilian population in Intoroko district. Now, on Tuesday this week, about 30 to 40 suspected ADF rebels engaged in a fight with UPDF in Intoroko district where 17 were killed and 13 captured alive. Although a number of civilian populations was displaced, main, but the situation has been brought to control and calm has returned. Major General Dick made the remarks in, a, in an interview to UB, UBC as he gave an overall update in the fights between UPDF and suspected ADF rebels that is in Intoroko. Philip Aguta reports. On Tuesday this week, about 30 to 40 suspected ADF rebels crossed from DRC, where they are based, to Uganda's Toroko district, where they were engaged in a fight with UPDF's Mount Division. 17 of the ADF rebel members were killed. 13 of them, who were mainly children, were captured alive and 15 guns recovered. Meanwhile, one UPDF officer was killed, one civilian killed, and another one civilian was injured. The Mount Division Commander of the UPDF and Commander Operation Shoja Major General Dick Olumu has commended the UPDF for having killed the suspected ADF rebels before causing any harm on the civilian population in Toroko District. These guys thought the UPDF was not in place back home in Uganda. They thought the Mountain Division was already fully deployed and totally deployed in DRC. But they do know this is one of the most strategic divisions of the UPDF. And uh, we had uh, a, a fallback position. We had a position backwards in the country. He says much as the ADF rebels are trying to divert and confuse them, UPDF is standby both in Uganda and in Congo as Operation Shuja continues. Stupidly, they didn't know what power we had. They started confrontation with my force. And then Colonel Sauro communicated to me and I immediately left Fort Potro and rushed down to Chibuku and moved further in areas called Busu, Busungu, uh, Kisungu. I went to that area where the, the fighting was going on only to realize that uh, Colonel Sauro had already gone into a huge fight with them and he really, really hit them hard. On starting to see the dead bodies, that's when we realized they were actually ADF. Major General Lumo, who is also the commander of Operation Shuja, says the attempts by the ADF to cross into Uganda are signs of pressure that UPDF is putting on the rebel group back in Congo. The bombings in Kampala had reduced a bit. Reduced, but I think totally really needs to, uh, reduced and stopped. The shootings had also stopped. But... The problems remained in DRC, where so many people were being killed, so many people were being abducted by the ADF. So we went in heavily. We've stopped that nonsense of road ambushes, killings, villages. And for the last three months now, the Congolese people have had some peace. A number of civilian population was displaced on Tuesday, but the situation has been brought to control and calm has returned. I'm Navka Farida. And Philip Aguta. Moving on, the opposition this week started a process of filing habeas corps demanding the release or production of their 25 members who allegedly went missing. Uh, this comes after the opposition a meeting uh, shielded with the Prime Minister and the Minister for Internal Affairs uh, this week over the same issue uh, flopped when the two allegedly failed uh, to turn up. The government has never responded. Opposition in parliament through their lawyers have started the process of filing habeas corpus demanding the release of their 25 members who allegedly went missing. We have uh, asked our attorneys to file habeas corpus for this, the 25 missing persons we logged in parliament. This follows a failed meeting with the Prime Minister and the Minister for Internal Affairs that had been scheduled for Wednesday this week. 
According to the leader of opposition in parliament, Matthias Mpoga, the meeting that had been scheduled to resolve the issue flopped after both the Prime Minister and Minister for Internal Affairs snubbed the meeting. At the prompting of the Deputy Speaker, the Prime Minister promised to come and make an account by way of comparing what we are questioning and what they know. And the last meeting was supposed to take place yesterday. None of the persons turned up for that meeting. Mpoga says they have already secured habeas corpus for two of their members, John Chibalaman Kanata Muhammad, awaiting response from court. On the fate of the two members of parliament still under custody, leader of opposition says they are still in pursuit of the matter and has asked the judicial arm to exercise independence. We want to impress it upon the judiciary to prove that they are not part of the persecution of these honorable members of parliament. Similarly, on the irregular misconduct of the former Commissioner Francis Zake, the leader of opposition says Zake's conduct is not intended but is informed by his past history of torture. He says the opposition will not criminalize Zake as long as he has not gone against any law. He noted that opposition will not also front anyone for the position of Commissioner until Zake's appeal is handled. He will have my back because that's his way of doing things. Of course, we get concerned when he gets into trouble. It means our duty to be by his side to get out of trouble. On whether opposition should take part in the censure of Minister Namuganza, Mpoga says opposition has a right to involve in any matter intended for disciplinary action. As long as she remains a person believing that um, she's above the law, we are interested. And therefore, there's no legal bar to any of our members to keenly follow and interest themselves in matters that will put her in the right shape. It should be noted that both MP Francis Dakia and Minister Pasis Namuganza have been regular clients in the Parliamentary Committee on Rules, Discipline and Privileges over alleged misconduct. This saw Francis Dakia relieved of his appointed position of Commissioner of Parliament and a motion moved on censorship of Minister Pasis Namuganza. Susan Naong and Gloria Guitabunji reporting for ABC TV. Now, still from Parliament, the August House, there are a section of members of Parliament are spearheading the censure move against a House and State Minister, Apasis Namuganza. Uh, this week, this agreed uh, with Dr. Chris Bariomonsi on the call for reconciliation. Now, this follows a hint on Thursday by the ICT and National Guidance Minister on a possibility by the ruling NRM party to have the two female national leaders work in harmony. The MPs say it is not a small matter, as asserted by Dr. Chris Bariomonsi. <laughs> It is a matter that continues to dominate the Ugandan media space for about a week now. Accusation and counter-accusation between two female national leaders dominating talks among members of parliament. When I read through the censor motion, I didn't find anything scientific to pin the person who is going to be censured. Therefore, I found it without merit and I, for me I think it should collapse. The talk is as a result of a discussion on the floor of parliament that has seen housing state minister Pasis Namganza defend herself. In the future, I intend to move a motion against Honorable Magogo Moses and the speaker of this house, Anita Mong, for procuring a fraudulent marriage Order. Order. which is turning into Order. a personal fight Order. in this house. Order. The matter is now drawn to the attention of government and the ruling NRM party. Dr. Chris Bariomunsi is the Minister for Information, Communications, Technology and National Guidance. We are going to reconcile these two leaders, the Minister and the Right Honourable Speaker. Because the NRM as a party and leaders government, we believe in the cohesion, we believe in leaders working together, we believe in reconciling people. But Yomunsi wants a peaceful resolution to the standoff, as opposed to a censure move against the housing state minister. Even when it comes to censuring a minister, there are more convincing grounds and stronger grounds 
which probably even would persuade Ugandans that maybe a minister should step down or a minister should be censured. But there's these quarrels between leaders. He appeals to Parliament to concentrate more on development intended legislation. Because Parliament has more useful work that should drain our energy so that Ugandans benefit from a Parliament. We wouldn't want to see a situation where we spend lots of time and energy in such issues. But Yomunsi's concerns are coming at a time. A war of words seems to be erupting between the Deputy Speaker of Parliament and Internal Affairs Minister, General Kahinda Otafire. Otafire recently decried parliamentary congestion, which he said compromises the quality of debate. I used to talk for 15 minutes. Now I have to compete for three. Because there are so many, you only, they are only requested three minutes. What do you say in three minutes? This has not rubbed Thomas Taewa the right way. The questions of 1986, when some people came from the bush, might be the questions of today. But the answers are totally different. Answers are not those ones where you have to remind us that you came from the bush, you had guns. No, the narrative is totally different. How far a quest for harmony between Speaker Among and Minister Namganza will go is an anxiety which only time will settle. Henry Okrut, UBC. You're still watching the weekly news roundup. Now, more updates. The Supreme Court uh, this week granted judicial relief to commemorate uh, the late Justice Ruby Opio Aweri for his works and services uh, rendered unto the public serving as a judicial officer for 39 years. In the ruling delivered by the Chief Justice Alfonso Owini Dolo, a court allowed to live on grounds that the late Justice Ruby Opio served at the nation as a judicial officer for almost four decades and served the country beyond self. After 27 years of cohabiting, Annette Nassos, aged 40, for a wife to William Kasenge with four children, has found it hard to share property. Since the law does not cater for her situation, in the event of a divorce, and Turuguni Zemiaka Abidi Mosambu, Omudio Okunti. American nationals and a couple, Mackenzie Alenga Mathias Spencer, aged 32 years, and Nicholas Spencer, aged 32 years, have been charged with one count of torturing a one Kaima John. They all pleaded not guilty to the alleged offense. Mackenzie Mathias Spencer and Nicholas Spencer, between 2020 and December 2022, at Naguru Nakawa in Kampala district committed an act of torture against Kaima John, aged 10 years. Through their lawyers, Lady and Babas, the accused as court to grant them bail by presenting three sureties where friends to the accused and that they have a fixed place of abode. Your Worship, they will not interfere with the case since investigations have been closed. Their prayers were, however, objected to by the prosecution, saying the sureties were not substantial enough. Your Worship, what am I submitting here? That the applicants are illegal in Uganda. Their illegality in Uganda now gives court only two possible remedies. If court grants them pain, court will be continuing an offense of illegal stay in Uganda, which they're already doing. The other option court has is to deport them, because their stay in Uganda now is illegal. But if court does the deportation that you have authority to do, it will be frustrating this case that we have in court today. Prosecution also told court that the investigations in the matter are not yet closed. With this, he asked court to decline to grant the accused bail. Council also attempted to present copies of medical documents, non-verified, copies of emails from doctors. It is very clear that where the prison's authorities cannot afford a particular person in jail, they write to court and inform court that they cannot manage a specific ailment. Due to time, Magistrate Sarah Tumusime 
remanded the accused until 20th December 2022, when she would deliver ruling on bail. I've been quite lengthy that require a careful study for me to be able to come up with a sober ruling. So in the circumstances, I had done this case to 20th for ruling on the bail application. Kaima John was adopted by the two from Welcome Home situated in Jinja. Uh, there are three types of torture, physical torture, mental torture, but it was tortured and it was evident. Uh, this would be seen from the videos that she sent me. There were lots of punishments that were given to this boy when, as he sat on a cold floor from morning to evening. Deborah Nama Monde, Susan in Nabogode, UBC News. Now, do pardon us right there, but those are still activities that did happen throughout this entire week from court. Now, relatedly, on some matter that earlier on updated you about, uh, that is to do with the fallen justice. Uh, the body of uh, late Supreme Court Justice Ruby Opio Aweri this week arrived in Lira City uh, for onward burial. Uh, the body was received from Amuke and taken to Lira City Council Hall for a joint special council sitting to eulogize uh, the fallen justice. By 1 p.m., relatives and loved ones of fallen justice Rubo Pia Weri had assembled at Amocha Secondary School to receive this casket. <laughs> Through Juba Road to Main Street, his body was led to Lira City Council Hall for a joint special council sitting to pay tribute to him. Many also gathered around the council hall to witness his arrival. <laughs> Emotion to receive his body was moved by Sarah Nweri. Move emotion that we receive the body of our fallen son for your relief. Thank you so much, Rachel. And the body was received by the city speaker, Council Patrick O'Queer. <laughs> they eulogized this simplicity and great deeds for the people of Lango. He is remembered for profiling all the small courts that are operating in the Lang region and elevated some of them into magistrate courts besides court in the Okolo district. There was an appeal in the church to have recruitment of members of the choir. And for those of you who know him, his voice is a small voice. <laughs> and therefore in the choir, he qualified to be a tenor singer. And he was a very good tenor singer that a road be identified near the school and named after him. The speaker also hailed the judge for the gift of the wig, which has made him the fourth in the country to own one. This wig is very expensive. My colleague always knows it, and then we show this. When I was here, the student was at 25 million, and that's about 10 years ago. And even now, it's a lot harder to vote over 50 million shares. His son, Jojo Bong, thanks the Council of Lango Subregion for honoring his father as a man who has made a great contribution in the country. He, however, urged the people to respect elders even when they still live. Young people are insulting. Today you are respecting my father after I stay. But I know among us here there are people who didn't respect him when he was alive. His humility and simplicity was taken for stupidity. That's something that you can't do. So, um, he gave us education. He inspired us to, to work. He supported and believed in the schools in Langosa region and needed the quality of education uplifted. But when we called Obi's meeting, justice would appear. He would come. He would attend. He would sit and listen to us. And he would support our ideas. And I can assure you that one gesture of humility help us, helped us to bring back Lao College to the map. As the leader from Lao, I would appeal to the central government that we still have the likes of Justice Rubio here in Lao. As much as he has departed, there is still room for more promotion. I would plead as the leader from Lao so that we have the continuity of, of such people Coming up. Late Justice Rubo Pia Were left behind a wedded widow and 11 children. He will be laid to rest next to his mother in Achumapenyi, Dokolo district on Friday.
Eddie Olwa, UBC News. In other updates, uh, the appeals chamber in Hague this week uh, dismissed all the 90 grounds of appeal filed by the former LRA leader Dominic Ongwen and upheld the 25-year sentence in the case where Ongwen uh, was challenging the trial chamber's decision. In dismissing uh, the appeal court was of the view of the view that the applicant failed to prove uh, to court with evidence that uh, the lower court erred in law when it convicted Ongwen on 61 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity. The former command of Lord Resistance Army, Dominic Kongwen, appealed a conviction and sentence of 25 years in prison by the International Criminal Court situated in Hague. Dominic Kongwen was convicted with 61 counts of crimes of war and crimes against humanity. Kongwen presented 90 grounds of appeal saying the trial chamber allowed in law, factual and procedure in convicting and sentencing him with offences. Ongwen told court that court also allowed in law when it relied on the evidence of acts that he was not charged with, causing prejudice and making the trial unfair. Other grounds include the failure by the trial court to adequately address the issue of mental illness and dress, under which Ongwen was operating among other grounds. The panel of five judges of the International Criminal Court Appeals Chamber, Judge Luz Del Kamin, Judge Piatau Hafmask, Judge Solomi Balunji Bosa, Judge Reina Lapin, and Judge Gosha Rodkipa Andize presided over the appeal. After perusing submissions from both sides, basing on the doctor's evidence, the appeal chamber confirmed that Ongwen did not suffer any mental illness before during trial. The appeal chamber concludes that the defense has not demonstrated any error in relation to the trial chamber's finding on the arrest as a ground of excluding criminal responsibility pursuant Article 31 1D of the statute. Court was not also convinced that Ongwen did not participate in abduction, forced marriage and forced pregnancy, yet he was the commander by then. That while there was evidence that some persons did believe in the spiritual powers of the Joseph Coney, the evidence consistently showed that for many persons who stayed in the LRA longer, their belief followed a pattern. Basing on offenses, Dominic Ongwen was found guilty with. The appeal chamber agreed with the lower court that all the relevant crimes Ongwen committed them during his adult age. With the issue of environment, which may have forced Ongwen to commit the offenses, court agreed with the trial chamber's decision. By dismissing the ground, the appeal chamber objected to all the 90 grounds challenging the conviction and sentence against Dominic Ongwen in the decision of 4 to 1. Prosecution in this matter was represented by Mami Mandie and defense counsel was Charles Sateleke Taku. Dominic Ongwen committed these offenses in northern Uganda between July 2002 and 31st December 2005. Deborah Nama Monde, UBC News. There was tension among residents of Oraba Town Council in Koboko as suspected South Sudan armed forces this week carried out a several lootings of property belonging to Ugandans. Now, according to the RDC Koboko, Tom Olinga, the lootings and attacks started two days ago where animals and other properties have been looted, causing tension among the Koboko residents. Now, he says they are now engaging the authorities of South Sudan to ascertain and verify the suspected armed group. Now on phone you'll be having Tom Olinga, RDC Koboko. The suspected South Sudan soldiers entered into a rubber town council on the morning of Thursday, invading and looting property worth millions of shillings from residents of Kenyabuli and Kangode cells in Aromoni Ward, Oraba Town Council, Koboko District. Uh, Right now, South Sudan is a part of East African community where we now needed to cultivate friendship, brotherhood, as far as Pan Africanism is concerned. So, the way of behaving like rebels again, when they are no longer rebels, that's very unfriendly policies. Therefore, coming to Uganda, looting property 
abducting people is an unfriendly policy, which is likely to affect the relationship between the two countries. The SPLA government has known that most of their people have come as refugees due to this war and started that they are in Uganda. And uh, likewise, some of them who never went to the camp, they are residing with the local people along the border there. In fact, the way they have looted the people, the people's property and money, and they are trying to, in fact, disorganize the peace and security of this nation. In the process, assailants are said to have kidnapped a 16-year-old boy, a son to a suspected rebel leader they were looking for, but was later released. Koboko District, Resident District Commissioner Tom Olinga confirmed the attack by the same soldiers. Uh, at first they were, they, were, they were denying that it isn't their soldiers who crossed to Uganda. But eventually they accepted and, uh, and agreed to follow up the animals and bring them back. And Because now it is one which is still lost, the other one came back. So that they, 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 they engaged their commander on the ground uh, to bring back the animal and they gave us two days in order for them to bring back the animal. Unfortunately, before they could even bring back the animal, yesterday morning, again a group of armed people we uniformed in uh, uniforms of, of uh, South Sudan People Defense Force crossed in a pursuit of people whom they suspect are uh, uh, the liars with NASA uh, with NAS or they are NAS rebels, as far as uh, a place called Lambiance. Lambiance is another town, small town in 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 Oraba. So when they reached that place, they never found the person they were targeting. But that's in Uganda. So they go, they kidnap, they kidnap, they kidnap the son and went with the son away. Now on going back, they started getting shooting at civilians, children were scared and they ran away. And then they started picking items from their households. And some of the items which were recorded were TV sets, radios, mattresses, granites, sacks, rice and money. They were picked and uh, they started uh, retreating back with them to Sudan. However, locals are demanding both governments of Uganda and South Sudan to amicably handle the issue, but also pave way of compensating the affected people. And the government should really speak and speak to the SPLA government. I wonder that uh, those who are looted, the government, our government, should establish what is looted. And, uh, the Sudan government, since it's their forces who have entered, they have to compensate that. I think I call upon the government of Juba to intervene in this matter so that our brotherhood is maintained. A general inquiry file has been opened to investigate circumstances under which armed foreign forces suspected to be South Sudan People's Defense Forces unlawfully entered into Uganda and invaded communities. No arrests have been made so far. Joseph Odamam, UBC News, in Koboko. Well, those are some of the regional updates that we have for we had for you uh, that did transpire throughout the entire week. But more updates from the central uh, still to come your way shortly when I return. That is in our business, our business, our business segment. Keep watching. to the wrong person. Here's how to reverse it with MTN Mobile Money. Dial star 165 hash. Select my account. Select initiate reversal. You will see your last three transactions. Select the transaction you want to reverse. Enter your mobile money pin and you'll get an SMS confirmation that the transaction has been blocked from being withdrawn. And that's it. Please note, only transactions that haven't been withdrawn can be reversed. Welcome to the Living Room Stadium. It's the FIFA World Cup. The match is about to start. Food and drink ready. There's no space left for anyone. Come on, get your lucky chair. Take your usual spot. Even the puppy has one. It's preparation time. 
You can feel the tension in the air. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? The festive season is here and it's Christmas in 4G from Air. Tell. Get the most affordable 4G smartphone in Uganda, now heavily discounted from 250,000 shillings to 150,000 shillings only. Yes, 150,000 shillings only to keep you connected to your loved ones this holiday season. Dell Star 175 Star 94 Hash to activate free 1GB instantly and 100% double data on all weekly and monthly battles for three months. Get one today while stock lasts from the nearest Airtel shop. Happy holidays this festive season with Airtel, the smartphone network. The Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We, however, urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes, and mouth. Please inform the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms. To prevent Ebola from spreading further, please take the following preventive measures. Regular washing of hands with water and soap. Avoid handshaking and hugging. Avoiding any contact with any suspected Ebola patients. Any person who dies suddenly should not be buried but reported to the nearest health worker or LC1 immediately. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800 one zero 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 six six or send a free sms to your report on eight five zero zero this message is from the ministry of health with support from unicef and world health organization paying for groceries the old way three four yeah five i don't six, even know what you're doing seven eight nine. <laughs> allow me paying for groceries with a my airtel app you have the power in your pocket. The power to conveniently pay for goods and services. Unlock that power with the My Airtel app. Visit the App Store or Google Play now. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> yeah, let me just take these points here. Eh? Welcome to Friend Stadium. Everybody's ready. Wait a second, not everybody. Come on, dude, it's the FIFA World Cup. You're going to lose your seat, the ritual seat, the lucky one. Losing more than a seat, your team is going to lose. Where are you, dude? The match is about to start. Your friends won't hold out much longer. Excuse me, excuse me. Finally, everything is in the right place. Hey, other hand. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? You're watching the weekly news roundup and you're watching the national broadcaster. Thank you for watching and staying. Now, straight into our business. Microfinance Support Center, in partnership with Kampala District Council for Imam Development Forum, uh, this week trained Muslims in Kampala about Islamic microfinance program to help uplift livelihoods of Muslims in the line with Islamic principles. Microfinance Support Center was created to help promote better standards of living among Ugandans through funding circles and other initiatives. A number of persons have benefited from a wide range of projects like a Mioga, Youth Livelihood Fund to mention but a few. However, the Muslim community has not benefited from such initiatives because of issues to do with the interest rate centrally to Islamic principles. Islam, we do not encourage interest, what we call riba. And uh, it, most of these government programs have that uh, aspect of interest. Now, we appeal to the government to put the halal banking where the Muslims can benefit from that program as well. Microfinance Support Center has now introduced Islam Microfinance for inclusion of Muslims in government programs. The manager institutional development at Microfinance Support Center, Godfrey Mangeni, gave an insight on the relevance of saving, making it clear Islamic microfinance will run on Islamic principles and Sharia instruments. We can start 
Islamic microfinance circles and also Islamic groups. That's what we are selling them here. That they can form their groups and operate using the principles of Islamic finance. They can form their circles and operate using the principles of microfinance, which is compliant with the teachings of the Quran. The manager Islamic investments at microfinance support center Sulaiman Lujia explains on how the system will operate. He called on the Muslim community to embrace this arrangement to benefit from government initiatives. We mean transaction of money. We buy money, we sell money in conventional banking. Now in Islamic, we don't mean that money will be free. The money we shall give you will be free. We, you, you return the same amount of money. We mean What we mean with Islamic banking, we are going to do trading, real economic activities. We shall ask you, what do you want to do? What economic activity? For example, you say, I want farming. I want to buy land. I want to purchase a tractor. Then we shall purchase the tractor and sell the tractor to you at a cost plus a markup. So as the Muslim community, we have no excuse. Uh, we can adopt these programs, in yoga programs, parish development model programs. We have Islamized them. Uh, we have Islamic contracts which we use, a version of them uh, which, uh, which is Sharia compliant. We have experts who advise us. The training is coordinator Nasser Abdul Semwanje asserts that the system will eradicate poverty among Muslims. We have also gotten the members from the microfinance support center who are here trying to take us through the steps on how the Muslims of Kampala district can benefit from these programs such that we are not left behind as the Muslim community. I'm Ivan Juko for UBC News. More from business. Ugandans were badly hit by COVID-19 pandemic, which left many businesses down, escalating poverty levels. Now, different organizations are strategizing on how to revive and reassure the clientele to gather their energies and move on with this festive at hand. Now, Coca-Cola is giving out hampers at its clientele in a 12-day bonanza during which uh, they will give out chicken, matoke, rice, soap, among others, to restore hope and vigor to its customers. Here today as we launch our Magic on Wheels campaign, this is part of our Real Magic campaign that we started uh, close to the end of last year. Uh, and it's basically about sharing, bringing magic to our consumers and customers that we have uh, in Uganda. As you all know, Christmas has always been synonymous with Coca-Cola. We have done this for almost a hundred years and we're not going to stop today. Coming out of the pandemic, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of celebration and we did change our, um, our thematic uh, to real magic. And as you can see in the background, our new thematic for our Christmas campaign is sharing the magic of Christmas. You're going to have the trucks going around the city center and the outskirts of Kampala where we will be gifting our loyal and, uh, you know, very dear customers with, uh, you know, family foodstuffs that can be able to be consumed at home. But most of all, we're trying to bring the families together. We've literally invested over about 200 million Uganda shillings in this campaign. What we want to do is give back to our consumers. Yeah. And like I said, we're going to be giving out food stuff. You will find that there will be a live chicken. There will be some rice in there. There will be matoke. Whatever Santa is able to give, it's a surprise. It is the weekly news roundup. Now, Airtel Mobile Camas, Uganda Limited, this week announced a 95% drop in Airtel money charges for transactions across other networks. It will now cost the same 1,000 Uganda shillings to send money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda and to Airtel customers in East Africa. Uh, this new development uh, will create uh, new opportunities for the development of the East African financial sector. Kamas Uganda Limited also announced a 78% reduction in Airtel money charges to other global networks. The maximum you pay to send money to East Africa through international money transfer will be again a maximum of 1,000 shillings. So we have actually scaled from 58,000 shillings to exactly 1,000 shillings. 
According to Market Research Report 2017 by Financial Sector Depending Program, the demand for interoperability by end users of financial services was high, even though fast with high charges. The international money transfer in the global world, that is borders beyond East Africa, these corridors used to cost a maximum of 58000 to send money. From today, the maximum you will pay for those corridors will be 12,500 shillings, from 58,000 to 12,500 shillings. Relatedly, Airtel Uganda has unveiled the last set of winners in the ongoing UG Needs More Review campaign. And that subtle campaign got so much of interest. We got 18,000 entries, 18K entries, entries uh, Airtel Uganda. Just imagine the plight of judges to select uh, six out of the 18,000. Now, if you create a product that is able to transform somebody's life, then you've actually had a great impact on someone. And so that's what we were looking out for for a lot of these products. And you know what was challenging for us? Was being able, as five judges, to look at the product and say, does this, does this product um, benefit more people than this other product? The Airtel supported UG Needs More Review campaign launched in March 2022 celebrates Ugandans who have provided tech-inspired solutions to change their lives and those of the community they live. Ugandans were encouraged to share stories that have harnessed the power of technology to solve real problems and better society. We as a technology enabler, we can only enable when innovators are innovating. Let's keep innovating, let's keep solving the problems. That's the way, the only way we can take this country forward. And as Airtel Uganda, we are here to play in that space and keep moving and developing our country, Uganda. Announce Airtel support to you always to make this country really dream big and for Uganda to really stand tall among all the countries in the world. Airtel gives out a total of 60 million Uganda shillings at a crowning ceremony. Sandra Kahonde, UBC News. <laughs> it's super fast internet. Oh, it's a super camera. It's a super battery. Yeah, it's a super deal. Get the Kabode Super from MTN now at a reduced initial deposit of only 49,000 shillings and pay the balance in Pola and Pola for as low as 833 shillings per day. Grab this Super Kabode deal this Christmas and get 2GB of free MTN data every month for 8 months. Get the Kabode Super now now from any MTN shop countrywide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Regulated by UCC. Get value for your money by choosing the right paint. With Global Paints, you don't just paint, but paint for generations to come. Make Global Paints a paint of choice and make your building a paradise. We have weather coat emulsion, undercoat emulsion, silk vinyl emulsion, flat emulsion, super gloss and high gloss. Global Paint, a reliable product. It is the weekly news roundup and we're live. Now from sports, our Miss Love Osiki's first half beauty was enough to seal third place at the World Cup for the courts as the Atlas Alliance fall to another defeat after their heroic giant killings in Qatar. A Josko put Crocher in front in the seventh minute with a diving header. Ashraf Adari equalized for Morocco two minutes later in a frantic start in Qatar. Miss Love Osiki's brilliant Carly effort put Crocher back in front before half time. Kosha finished third in Qatar, marching the achievement from 1998 in France. A few minutes from the end, Morocco center forward uh, Youssef uh, jumped higher than his marker in the Kosha box and nodded a header towards goal. It went inches too high when the final whistle went to confirm Kosha's victory and the third place to go with their runners up finish in Russia four years ago. A cohort of the Moroccan players rushed over to the Qatari referee Abdelrahman Al Jazim and surrounded him.
you can still keep it here based the National Broadcaster for more updates and more of the fan as far as World Cup is concerned. My name is Sandra Cahone. It's been a great day spending time with you this lovely Sunday. Thank you so much for choosing the National Broadcaster. More news definitely are later on in the subsequent news hours of the day. From the entire team behind the scene, enjoy your Sunday and of course a fruitful week ahead. God bless you.